What's going on guys? I'm actually making another long form tutorial instead of a YouTube short for this one. This tutorial might actually get turned into a series because of the topic, which is how to make a basic dungeon crawler game. Uh, I, I assume you read the title. I ho hope you can read. Uh, this video will basically be covering the backbone of a dungeon crawler and how stuff is done instead of like, you know, all the, like how to make effects and like gu custom guns and whatnot. Again, if this video does well, I might actually turn it into a series because I kind of like this idea. But without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so to start, you have to have a basic concept in mind. Like, what do you want the dungeon crawler to like actually look like and whatnot? Like, what enemies do you want to be fighting? For me, I'm just going to show you guys how to do stuff. You can do however the hell you want to do like certain things and whatnot like you can add a main menu UI, which i might do but i'm gonna show you how to create the actual progression part of it where you like kill a wave of enemies or a room of enemies and a door opens up and then you kill that room of enemies and then another door opens up and you basically just repeat that for a bit uh this is inspired by uh, a comment that i got on one of the shorts actually uh, I'll leave the- I'll put the comment on screen. Thanks to this guy, I have a new video topic. Ha ha ha. But yeah, to start, I'm just gonna create a basic room so you get a time lapse of me screwing around with parts. A few moments later. Now that we have a basic map, we can actually get to the important parts. And the first important part is I'm going to rename this part to, uh, door one. Um, and this is going to be the part that we destroy once we kill a certain enemy. But yeah, once we have that, I'm going to actually create, or I'm going to duplicate this door right here. I'm going to rename it to trigger. I'm going to set the transparency to a uh, one and I'll scale it back a little bit just so it's on. Like you don't accidentally touch it when you touch door one from this side so what i'm gonna do is i so now that i have a part that's triggerable and whatnot it's invisible and whatnot i'm actually going to turn ken collide off keep ken touch and anchored on though uh ken query is goofy but keep it on um and now we have a trigger so what is gonna happen is we're gonna make another trigger right here but i'll get to that in a second What's going to happen is when a player kills a specific enemy in this room, uh, the door will break, but the new enemies won't spawn until the player walks past this trigger. This is this can be optional for your game. I personally like it so the like the enemies aren't just right up against the wall already just waiting for your uh for you to kill this guy and then they're going to bum rush you. Uh, they're supposed to be rooms, they're not supposed to just all come together at level 2. But yeah, now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get an enemy. Um, so I have this enemy NPC that was made by How to Roblox. Uh, I probably will leave a link uh, to his channel in the description. Uh, basically, this is just a basic enemy NPC, whatever. Okay. Um, but now we have an NPC. We could just have the one NPC, but I'm going to show you how to make it so a bunch of NPCs in the same room will be spawned at once, once you trigger something. But yeah, let me just duplicate this NPC uh, a couple times and then drag them to different parts. I'm actually going to scale this middle NPC up a little bit, if the game lets me. Yeah, scale it up a little bit just so I know this is the big guy I need to kill. I'll move him back a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, this is just a basic NPC. You can obviously change. If you have your own custom enemy, then... First off, why are you watching this video? You're already probably better than I am. Uh, but second off, you can use him. But yeah, now that I have my NPCs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into replicated storage. I'm going to create a folder. We're going to title this to be levels. And in that folder, I'm going to create another folder. And I'm going to title this uh, level one. And then I'm going to drag all of these NPCs into the folder. This for right now, it's just organizational purposes. But this folder system will be important when we're scripting. So now what I'm going to do, speaking of scripts, is I'm going to create a script underneath the trigger. Uh, make it a normal script. 
uh, a server script. And then I'm gonna code a little bit and, uh, and then I'll come back and explain. One eternity later. All right, so I finished the script and what this script does is it basically gets when the trigger is touched, it will spawn all of the enemies that uh, that trigger level is set for. So the only thing that you really need to change uh, until we get to later stages, obviously, is this level variable. Depending on what level you're making this for, so like this will be level one. So I'm actually gonna move this trigger to. Uh, I'm actually just gonna duplicate it and scale it. And whatnot. I'm gonna move this trigger to the spawn room because this is gonna be the one that starts the entire thing. This will be the script that reads level one. If you do a level two on this trigger over here behind this wall, then obviously we'll spawn the level two people in or level two enemies in instead of the level one ones again but yeah let's run it and see if this works obviously if i touch here now you see that's an issue so the reason it's kind of weird but roblox whenever you touch a part it stays touched it shoots multiple like uh touched functions out while you're touching the part i don't remember how any time i think it's per every tick if the part is touched it will send something out but I, I could be very very wrong but in order to prevent this what we're gonna want to do is we're going to want to find the trigger and we're gonna go into the script and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable called touched and this is going to equal false um and then if when the part is touched if touched equal equal false if i could type correctly that would be awesome and then put all do that if statement put all of that in there we're also going to add, uh, add a statement where touched equals true here so touch will equal true this is to prevent you know the enemies spawning all the time so this if statement basically goes if touched equals false since we're Folding it to be false. The only way it could be turned true is if something with a humanoid touches it. And since the only thing in the game with a humanoid at that point in time is the player character, this is just gonna mean, oh, it's the player character. We win. So uh, basically, it j it'll turn touch to equal true once the player walks through it. So now, if I run it again, you'll see that it should work. See, it works. Uh, oh my god, that guy's fast. So that's the scripting done for the first uh, pseudo checkpoint, I guess. Okay. Next thing we need to do is we need to actually get the NPC to destroy the part when they're killed. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to dictate which NPC that we want to actually be the one that gets killed in order to uh, break down this door here. And I'm going to make it the big guy. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a script to it and rename the script so you don't lose it make it like uh progression holy hell i spelled that wrong progression sure that works and what we're gonna do is we're going to get the enemy's humanoid so for this one it's just local humanoid equals uh script dot parent uh find first child humanoid it'll probably be the same thing for any enemy that you guys are using but this is how i'm calling the humanoid for this enemy all right so the next thing is the final thing actually and it's we're just gonna check if the humanoid uh dies uh so humanoid dot died checks if the when the humanoid dies or gets when the humanoid dies connect it to a function you can just leave no parameters there and what we're gonna do is we are going to destroy door one so we're gonna do a game dot workspace dot door one destroy alternatively if you want to like if you're gonna just duplicate all of this for every single level what you could do is you could actually create a variable just door equals and then get whatever door you're using uh, in this case, door one, and then you could just do uh, door 
colon destroy, which is what I'm gonna do right now. Just door colon destroy. And yeah, now I just need to grab a weapon so we can test this. And we should be good. Roblox actually has some pretty sick uh, default weapon systems. Um, I really only use the pistol for when I'm uh, screwing around. But I have all of them because it's kind of funny. We can, I might go over how to create your own custom weapons, uh, but not right now. Anyways, now let's it's time to test uh, if this actually works or not. So that's an error with the well, or the Roblox weapons. If I kill that enemy, that door opens. And you still have to kill all the other enemies, obviously. But that door opens once you kill the guy you assigned the door to open to when, you know, they die. I'm really not good at English, I'm realizing. But yeah, now we what we can do is the final bit for this video, and that's creating a level 2 uh, to create that infinite gameplay loop. We already basically created it, but I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that folder. Uh, the level 1 folder in replicated storage, just rename it to level 2, and then highlight all of the enemies in the level 1, or the new level 2 folder, and just kind of drag them to where they need to be for the level 2. And that's basically it. All we need to do now is get the level 2 trigger, script, and then change it from level 1 to level 2. And then in the NPC that we need, uh, change whatever, we just change whatever door we need to delete. I'm just going to rename this back place, uh, to door two, just to show you guys how it, like that it works and whatnot. Um, and then I'm just going to change the NPC progression script door two. And now if I run, uh, the program. I walk through, kill the big guy, that door opens up, and as you can see, the enemies aren't there yet, but if I cross a certain line, they spawn. Big guy moves insanely quickly. I'm able to dispatch with him, and now that back door is open. And I died. I suck, apparently. But yeah. That's the basics of a uh, dungeon crawler game. Hope you guys enjoyed and I hope this was useful to you guys. I know I'm probably create this or turn this more into a series and expand on this. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope I see you guys again soon. Bye bye.